Okay, hey guys, Kid Guru here, and I have uh, a video that's long, long overdue, actually. It's the basics of Sony Vegas Part 2, and basically what happened was, Vegas Part 1, yeah, uh, I had to reformat Windows, or, you know, reinstall Windows, and I lost it, so, because I, I lost everything, so I had to reinstall it, and Vegas was acting up at first, and then I reinstalled that, and I finally got it working, and I forgot that I had to do this video, and I remembered, so, guys, here's Part 2, I left off last time on Event Pan Crop and Generate Media, sorry, I know, big time gap, don't worry, you can refer back to Part 1 and then watch Part 2 right after, if you need to, trying out the full screen, just so you can get the full, uh, view of Vegas so you know what I'm talking about sometimes you know I use the 320 by 240 because of quality reasons but this is just a little bit choppier not as much but uh, uh if you like the one where I just used a moving region let me know if you like full screen then I'll keep it full screen when it comes to Vegas just let me know uh comment and you know tell me what view you like better anyhow I left off an event pan crop and I'm gonna it's really important you know whether it be keyframing or I mean yeah keyframing and whether it be beginner or pro um you're always gonna use this pretty much if you want cool effects, stuff like that. Now, usually this can be for masking. I don't know if you'll use this much in like tutorial wise, but if you have more videos, if you know if you have a if you have a video like actual video from a camera, this will be really cool. You can do really cool effects with it though. First off, you can usually you'll see this on anything that has video or anything like that. You just click event pan crop and oddly the the positioning of here you go. Okay, you have your position in the mask. Basically, a mask was a kind of like a layer. It will mask over now. You're gonna use this for stuff like Star Wars effects, like lightsabers, because you're gonna want to create a mask over your video. That's basically what a mask is. Uh, position, on the other hand, is gonna be positioning what you have on your what your you know you can pan it, you can crop it, whatever. This is the positioning tool right here. You move it around. You can. This is your you know. Look, if you notice right here, while well, I move it around, based on my preview window moves around. So. Let's say I want it to stay here in the beginning, and uh, I'm going to drag the little keyframe marker a little bit over, not too much, and uh, move it over there, do the same thing again. Or you can even go more precise and go next keyframe, or it should be right here, next keyframe, and like this, and there's a little bit next keyframe, or control right, whatever you're better with, control right's pretty, you know, easy, just go next keyframe, and I'm just going to jump around, this is, you know, gradually you want to move it smaller and smaller each keyframe, you don't want to make big gaps. Uh, and this is just an example, and I'm gonna hit exit real quick and hit play the video, so you'll notice it should. Oh, hang on, did I save the keyframe? Okay, I did. Okay, so let's rewind that. Maybe it'll work now. Let's see. Play from start. If you notice right there, well, you saw it moved. Basically, that's what you're gonna get, but more, you know, gradual and smooth, depending on how you, uh, you know, mess with your keyframe. Keyframing is very important, like I said. So. Uh, you know, if I just kept them going, I'm just gonna do this for an example. It can actually look real cool. You mean you can make it bounce, you can make it fly in, pop in, whatever you want to. Uh, so it's really about timing stuff like that. So I'm just gonna click out real quick and hit play from. It's not there. It's good. Like it's not perfect, but that's keyframing, and you're gonna do that basically in event pan crop. Uh, you can open these if you want, adjust the smoothness, etc. You can do it by your X center and your Y center. That's all about rotation and angles. And you have your position right here, width and height. You have all your tools right here. Your normal edit tool, zoom edit tool, basically allows you to zoom. Snapping, snapping is more for uh, when you're working in like, for example, Star Wars effect snapping. Uh, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it's like when it holds on, like you can't really move the shape around or form it. You basically have the solid shape as it is. Uh, if that makes any sense, I'll get probably get more into that uh, in another video because I'm not that good with snapping. But usually I just use a normal edit tool. Uh, uh, and then anyways, you have your move freely, which is right here. You know, move down. See, that's on the left, right. Now, if you wanna, you know, let's, let's see here, move the up and down, move left, right. It's just you know, basic stuff like that. And then masking, like I said, the whole other thing. It's more for other effects you'll be using. So that's all for keyframing on event crop. Now moving on to generate media. Basically, this is just lets you go back in and edit what you already have in your media. You can put properties, effects, all that stuff. You know, you can shear it horizontally, squish the top so it looks like that. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do, you can all edit it back here. No matter, you know, whatever the media may be. So yeah. Okay. Now moving on. Uh, some other basics. Uh, I'm not sure if I've already gone over these, but yeah, you can adjust with these. These are your opacity. Like every, I'm not sure if I talked about that, but you can adjust your opacity or your uh, pretty much it's the see-through, you know, transparency of your whatever media. And you have your compositing mode, 3D source alpha. That's just you know you can s select your composite as you wish. 
and you can have custom whatever and I think I'm just, I think it was on add oh actually so if you notice the difference in the compositing and multiply mask that would just you see there you get that kind of see-through effect multiplies mask and the mask would be whatever's on top and that would be the text um, let's see here and will look like that subtract would be take away so the text would look like this and you know you have all that other stuff but I think I just had it on <laughs> see now I don't even know what I had it on source alpha yeah there you go source alpha okay so uh, audio of course will look a little bit different and uh, we have an audio track so let's insert an audio track here oh audio track and let me delete this track well audio track you see has a little bit different you have your track effects you can add those F FX automation automation settings you can pan the what the sound you want to come out of if you want it center basically will if you have a piece of audio that you know comes out both sides that's center it's balanced left and right now if you pan it all the way to the left your audio is only going to play towards the left speaker left headset whatever right obviously it's only going to play on the right uh... basically you want it centered and um... let's say for example you have uh... tracks so let me just go ahead and find a piece of audio that i would be a good example of this i think i actually have the perfect one now, let me see. Oh, here it's, it's all on the side. Sorry, it just froze up a little bit because Podcast 9 data has a lot of. It's all the little extra files there. But, yeah, so uh, here you go. Just gonna. Oh, hmm. Let's see, which one do, which would be a good example of what I'm trying to show here? Okay, I know, where, I know where it is. If I go to my desktop, I actually have a media folder. And, uh, let's see here. I think I have. Browser bait. Let's drop this in. Oh, or yeah so now I'm gonna import that and drop it into the track and, okay so it's a little you know right there now I don't know if you, you probably won't be able to hear it but if you have a piece of audio let's say for example it's only playing out of one track right let's say it's only playing out of you know one side like in uh, this example I don't know if you can hear it but this audio is kind of uh, it's kind of you know uh, you know a little shaky right and left but let's say you have an audio that's uh, you know, you don't even have this set, but when it records or whatever, it's only recording out of the right or whatever it may be. And what you, you can do if you right click and go to channels, by default it should be both, uh, you know, both left and right. Now, if you have one that's playing, uh, you know, some audio is coming out of left, some's coming out of right. If you hit combine, basically it's going to combine them together to form one track. So you have basically you have the right channel playing on both left and right and you have the left channel playing both right and left rather than it be playing one audio one side on the left one side on the right and to simplify it let's say I'm talking with somebody let's say my audio is coming out only on the right side their audio is only coming out on the left you know it's gonna sound kinda weird if you combine it basically you'll get both sides both you'll hear both people through both sides um here so that's you know and it's a little bit into audio I'm not you know I really don't I'm not the master with audio, but you know, basically, you can edit it as you like. Uh, you have your law, other ar options here. Arm for record. You can record within Vegas if needed. Um, invert track phase. So basically, I'll, I'm pretty sure that'll just reverse it. Excuse me there. Uh, automation settings. Mute it, obviously, in solo. You can put that, and that goes the same for a video. Um, so yeah, that's basically with it in audio and video. You re audio, you have all, a lot of other options, like I said, though. There's switches, there's takes groups uh synchronize and you know it's you can open it in an audio editor and basically you can open it in something like audacity and drop it back in here uh open it in trimmer if you like to trim it up a little bit but yeah it's up to you uh anyhow so that's a little basics of the audio and you know generated media along with some other stuff now uh you know there's a lot of other stuff that I can cover but I just want to cover basically the basics and I did pretty much that now other stuff I'll explain real quick prototype filters a little bit more uh, a little bit more advanced. I'll get into that in another video. As for everything else, uh, stay tuned for more tutorials. And there goes my phone. So I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening. Uh, comment, rate, and subscribe.